Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. Today, I released the Create This VR UI as an open source MIT licensed project on GitHub. Uh, now, the MIT license, for those of you who don't know, means that it's free to use for commercial purposes. You can include the code, uh, do whatever you want with it. Okay, so. This video is going to be about why you as a VR developer should care about the Create This VR UI. Now, first things first, this is a Unity UI. So if you're an Unreal Engine developer, um, sorry, I don't use Unreal. Um, maybe somebody there can port it or, you know, whatever. Also, if you're into laser pointer UIs, this is not your thing. This is a fully 3D touch-based UI. There are no laser pointers involved. Uh, if you want to touch the buttons, you physically reach out and touch them. It'll be great for haptic gloves. Uh, it also works really well with touch controllers on the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift. If you've ever created a 3D UI of any kind in VR, uh, one of the first things that you'll notice is that changing uh, text on a button is usually a chore. So one of the things that this UI aims to solve is to make that much easier. And so you can see here, I'm in a text mesh and all I have to do is type and it is automatically updated. This is done using scales. You can see the scale changes here as I type and the surrounding scale of the, uh, the button changes as well. These are controlled using grow scripts for the text mesh and the button background. And if, if you change something on the grow script, like say the padding on the left and right of the text, there's a nice little resize button that you can click there to recalculate it automatically. Uh, we also have things like minimum widths where, say you've got a button like this drive button here. If you want this button to always have a minimum width, you can do that. Otherwise, for example, if we make this 0.1 and we resize this, you can see that it's quite a bit smaller than we would probably like that button to be. The other thing that it has is undo support. So you can control Z to undo your changes. Those are persisted using the Unity undo stack. Uh, this also works in real time. So all of these scripts, uh, well, most of these scripts have editor and real time components. So for example, this path label up here, as that grows, if you have a really long file path, the surrounding panel will grow as well. The other thing that you can do is say you've got a document button and you want to clone it because you want to make a new one. You can duplicate that button and you can see the surrounding panel grows automatically. Uh, that also has an undo component, so you can control Z to undo it. Another cool feature that we have is the concept of rows and columns. So. Here we have a row with an alignment. And what I can do is I can change from a right alignment to a left alignment and hit the Move Children button. And automatically my button changes. So it also works with center alignment if you'd like. That's really handy for, for layout changes. Uh, the concept of rows and columns is loosely based on HTML because I come from a web development background, but I unfortunately do not have the concept of a float yet. So, you know, usually in CSS you can do like float right, float left, stuff like that. Uh, this doesn't support that. You strictly have columns and rows. And one of the limitations is I think rows with columns inside of them probably doesn't work very well. So you're limited to very basic layout, but at least you have some layout support you know, at all. Technically, most of this is done using box colliders, but in some cases we use uh, renderer bounds instead. Let's see, the other concept that the Create This VR UI introduces is factories. And so even for things as simple as buttons, uh, as you can see here, a button has many components. So it's got the outer button class, and then it's also got, or the outer button object rather, game object in Unity terms. And then it's also got the body, which is the, uh, the physical you know, 3D body of the button itself. And then it has the text label, which is you know, where, where the text goes. So it can become a pain really quickly to create these uh, if you have to do that manually. Um, for a long time, I just used the duplicate method, and that worked OK. But if you ever need to change like all of the button bodies uh, in, a, in a panel, then that doesn't really scale very well, because now you're swapping out the button bodies on you know, 300 buttons or something, and it's just a nightmare. So um, I'm not sure how well this works, but one workaround that I came up with was the concept of a factory. 
And uh, factories are very common in programming. You know, hopefully you know what a factory is. But basically, this uh, I've got factories for buttons, I've got factories for rows, factories for columns, panels, and um, specialized panels like the Save As panel here. And so all you do is populate it with all of the va values. And these are, unfortunately, as of yet, not documented. So you know, I'll just run down some of these so you know what they mean. Uh, label Zs, anything that has a Z is probably like a Z offset uh, for offsetting th things in the, in the Z direction. So here, you know, the distance from this, of this button away from the panel is a Z offset, and that's the button Z, okay? Those are usually given in world space. Uh, you can't do local space because of the scale issue. So those are given in world space. But then when you want to size an individual button, you deal with scales, not world space. So um, if you see body scales here, that's usually the scale of the button before it's sized for text. Um, and you know you can play around with some of these values and hit the generate button and see see how that changes things. Uh, padding and spacing, I think those are pretty self-explanatory if you've got any experience with HTML. And some of these things like kinetic scroller spacing are specific to the kinetic scroller component. You know, search patterns, things like that, or file file globs. VRTK support. So most of the factories have a use VRTK boolean on them and you can uh, check that, and then when you hit the generate button, VRTK specific scripts will be added um, to all of the created objects. And so these VRTK specific scripts are here. So assets create this scripts VRTK, and there's only two of them. Um, turns out VRTK support is pretty straightforward to implement, uh, and it basically, maps, if we look in the VRUI interact directory, it basically maps uh, the grabbable t and touchable behaviors. Um, so these are, these are things that, that buttons and other components like panels will inherit from grabbable and buttons will inherit from touchable, right? And so uh, it, it, it routes those inputs so that VRTK can provide input to the create this VR UI system. Hope that makes sense. Just a short video describing some of the uh, reasons why VR devs should care about this. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.